There's so many areas of life and they all matter so much. And there's gaps that we all have, like where we're sitting right now, whether that's family, fitness, franchise, finance, right. faith. And it's like, man, I just wanna, I wanna level up life in all these different areas. And we've been on this journey of really trying to level up every area of our life. We don't sit here as experts or, or pretend to be perfect in the area. We're just trying to sit here as, hey, we've gone through some things, we've been through some things, we've built business, all different areas of life. And we've just been on this progressive journey of trying to level up. The intention behind it is to just bring you information and impartation where you can level up every single area of your life. Let's cross some gaps and then man, let's help others cross some gaps together. The one thing I would encourage you guys to do is like, man, as we go through some stuff and today we're going to unpack some very practical things. This is what I could do to help connect and level up to family. This is what I could do to level up my business, my faith. So we're going to give you some practical things. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to a Leveled Up Life podcast. I am Brandomir, just the main man right here, Paul McLean, and uh, we are here today, episode number one, to talk all right. things a Leveled Up Life podcast. Man, this has been a long time coming. Something we've been praying about, something yeah. we've been dreaming about, talking about for a long time, and here we are, man. Yeah. It. Uh, well, I've had a lot of thoughts, dude. I know. And sometimes those thoughts are from from God. I call it inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're from. The enemy, we call it temptation. Sometimes right. it's for me and it's stupidity. Already preaching, let's yeah, go. <laughs> this one was from inspiration. That's right. And uh, man, I just felt like, dude, there's so many um, areas of life and they all matter so much. Yeah. And, uh, and there's gaps that we all have, like where we're sitting right now, whether that's family, fitness, franchise, finance, right. faith. And it's like, man, I just want to, I want to level up life in all these different areas. Absolutely. And um, I think that was really kind of the the thought that, that I had and bounced it off you. And it just seemed like... Man, that's such a need yeah. where there's people that are, you know, they're killing in one area of life. Like, and I've had those areas where yeah. it's like, man, my business is flourishing. I'm like, this feels good. It's all great. But then I go home and like my marriage is not yeah. where it needs to be. Right? Absolutely. I think more people can relate to that than we even know. And we've been on this journey of really trying to level up every area of our life. And uh, we don't sit here as experts or, or pretending to be perfect in the area. We're just trying to sit here as, hey, we've gone through some things. We've been through some things. We've built businesses. We're raising families, you know, ministries, all different areas of life. And we've just been on this progressive journey of trying to level up. I love that you gave language to what we're actually been living this last, you know, 12 years since we met. We've just been leveling up our life in every single area. And like you said, more people um, are looking for something like this, a community, a podcast, um, just something they could turn to and say, hey, man, I got it going on in this area, man, I'm killing it uh, financially, or I'm killing it with my faith, or I'm killing it with my fitness. But there's this other area that I'm struggling in. And so this is, uh, at least our heart, the intention behind it is to just bring you uh, information and impartation where you can level up every single area of your life and just get better. Like you said, close the gap from where you are and where you know you could and should be. Yeah. So, yeah. well, dude, I, there's not been many mornings where I just like, dude, I, I bounded out of bed. Yeah. I was excited. <laughs> right. So man, I can't wait to get with you and it's a privilege to partner with you in this. And, Absolutely. and I was just excited to bring the value that I know that this is going to bring to the audience and everybody that's plugged in and and I just feel like, man, more people are alike than they are not alike. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and it's and so it's so easy to think like, oh man, I'm just the one right. that's feeling empty or feeling lost or feeling like, man, I I want more. It's like, no, dude, everybody absolutely. is all the people you're looking at on that screen that you're like, man, that just they got it together. Yeah, it makes you feel inadequate. It's no, a they, trap. They got a gap. That's right. And the trap is a gap. That's right. Or a gap is a trap. And I love that you sound real authoritative. You know, authoritative yeah. right now. Your voice. My voice, a little bit, it's a little bit deeper. I like, like how we plan this out, you yeah. know? Well, I've been screaming at my kids <laughs> yeah. intentionally to make sure that my voice <laughs> sounded extra spiritual. You know what well, I mean? Well, you do, man. You got it going on. And uh, like, I love what you said that, you know, m many people are looking at people through a screen or the highlight reel of life and going, man, these people got it so much better than me or they're, you know, so much further along than me. And like you said, more people are alike than they're not. And so our heart is just to kind of maybe give some insights and some tips for some things that we've walked through, some stories, some struggles, and how we overcame those situations and been able to um, level up in those areas and look back and say, man, uh, it was it was a reason I went through all those things and finding the good in that and then using our story, our testimony, what we've walked through and try to help you 
get through maybe a certain struggle or season that you're walking through right now. And so yeah, that's the heart, man. I love it, dude. We know I, I think about like back to being 19. Yeah. And uh, you know, I had I had just got married. Yeah. Just had a baby. And I actually did it backwards. I got no, I did. I got married. Me and you no, both, I had bro. a baby, then I got married. That's what I did. I did uh, <laughs> it don't matter now, yeah, but you yeah. know. It's, but hey, 19, man, <laughs> yeah. that was a go year. It was mm-hmm. like, dude, if I'm gonna do all these things, I'm gonna, let's do it now. Right. And uh, man, I remember getting married, had a baby, and uh, started business in, in the financial services world. And uh, the blessing behind that was there was so much personal growth with such a a point of emphasis, like this is an important right, thing. Right. And uh, man, I didn't know what I didn't know. And, you know, my life, who I was at that point was just a really a culmination of experiences. Yeah. Consumption, what I've heard from my parents, upbringing, my association, affiliation with other people. And and I remember stepping into that world and getting around just like big thinkers. Yeah. Man. Like, you know, people that, and it was really related to financial success, you know, business success. But I remember getting associated with that and realizing, like, man, like, there's something more. Like, there's 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 levels above yeah. where I'm at now. Absolutely. And I remember at that time, dude, like, getting some hope, right? Where I yeah. just felt like, man, like, excited. Like, there's some hope. It gave me a, a vision Absolutely. of a future that could be better than the one I was currently in. Yeah. And um, and as I, as I started to down that journey of personal growth, you know, I started to invest in myself and came out with this plan of every year, man, I got to invest into books, into seminars, into coaching, into programs. And and um, that helped me start to think different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that was such an important part of me realizing, like, if you got to level up your your life, man, you got to level up your thinking. Absolutely. Like the same thoughts I had were going to keep me where I was at. Yep. If I wanted to get to a different level, I had to think at a different level. And, um, and, and I remember going through that process and, and as each year went on, you know, learning so much about, you know, life and family and, and how they all intertwined together as we built a business and recruited at a high level and did all those things, um, how, man, I could be so focused in one area and my finances and franchise, man, it was growing. We got to one of the biggest insurance agencies in the entire nation sold it um you know a couple years back and and in that process there was times where you would think like oh man he's got it going on but i had so much time spent in the franchise that i was failing as 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 a husband right or 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 there was levels that i could be reaching as a husband because they all worked together it wasn't like i had had to step so much far back from the franchise part, but I just had to be more intentional and diligent with knowing some things to do, Absolutely. you know? And I think that's the big thing that we really want to talk about is like, man, like <laughs> we got some stuff to share because we've messed some things up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had divorce papers signed at 19 and, um, and really messed it up in the beginning. And there was a process of like, knowing what to do and how to do it. And now as I sit back, like, man, I wish I would have known some of these things. Yeah. What would your life look like? if you had something or someone in your life who could speak into and say, Hey man, the situation that you're in right now is not the final destination. Like if you can just make it through this tough season, if you could just apply these steps or do these things, cause here's what I've seen, here's what I've learned, how much more uh, of, you know, the life that you're living now, the healthy relationship that you have now, how much of that gap would have been cutting down and you didn't have to go through all the struggles and the hurts uh, that you that you went through to get mm-hmm. to the success you have now. And so I think it's similar to me. You know, I wasn't, um, I, I went straight from high school to college football. Um, and really, I, w- I got around a lot of high level thinking, um, especially because my dad and kind of how he raised me to always think bigger and think more. But what I've learned and what I've realized is a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people don't have someone in their life who can speak into them and say, hey, the situation or the thing that you're going through now is not it like there's more in store for you and so it doesn't matter if you were raised uh with someone speaking life over you mm-hmm. or not you know there's something on the inside of us that knows man there's got to be more to life than this but if you don't know how to get there if you don't have people in association around you that can show you how to get there how to take that next step how to level up their life then you're just on this journey of doing life alone mm-hmm. and with that it just brings a lot of frustration a lot of like man, I'm not good enough, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of comparison that comes into the situation. And then you just end up repeating the same year that you lived last year for the next 30 years. And then you're 60 and you have all these regrets, oh, yeah. you know, yes. which is the worst. And so uh, I hope that we can be maybe some voices to speak into your life and and let people know, hey, there is more in store for you. There is bigger, there is better, there is new levels to life that you can get to. And we want to help people along that journey. Um, 
just like we've been helped along our journey. We didn't do this alone. No, no doubt. Know? And we're not there yet either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and dude, uh, dude, one tip can change everything, man. Absolutely. Like one, one, one like strategy, right? One new thought, yeah. one new practical step to take. And all of a sudden it's like, man, like you, you start opening up these doors where you didn't know like there's so much more. Right. You know, like I feel like the, like the a great deceiver wants to kind of keep us blinded to the fact that there's more before us. Yeah. But man, there's doors at different levels that when you step in, man, it's just bliss, happiness, joy. And I think that's what we want to go. We want to go after these emotions that we just feel great. Well, there's practical things that will help produce those things. And hey, question for you, man, because you said something about football. And when you were getting up early, you tripped and looked like you're, you got like hip issues or something. Don't worry about it, Is bro. From football? Don't, don't worry about it, man. Yeah, when I was 11, I actually broke my hip. Okay. I was, uh, I was actually pretty good at wakeboarding, believe it or not, you know. And um, I was doing flips and, and kind of learning that whole. I was, I, was, I was one of those guys that I wasn't scared of anything, so I was busting back flips and all kinds of things. And I hurt my hip wakeboarding. And uh, being a kid, I, I didn't think anything of it. And that same afternoon, I slipped and I fell on my skateboard right in my driveway. And you said you're an athlete, right? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> well, former. I'm yeah. former. I'm we're, a former we're, athlete. You the know? good news is the purpose of the podcast <laughs> is not to help you elevate your athleticism. Yeah. So when I was 11 years old, I broke my hip, and then um, what's what's funny you brought that up because I was thinking about that this morning without you even saying that. Um, the next morning, I had surgery and I had two seven inch pins put in my hip. It's still there to this day. And so if you see me, I kind of I kind of got a little gangster yeah, when little I walk, gang, you know. Yeah. Um, but I just remember <laughs> being in the eighth grade and the doctors kind of tell my parents, "Hey, he probably shouldn't." be in any physical sports, activity, definitely not football. And I remember that very next year is when I started playing football in, in ninth grade and I played for eight years straight all the way through college. Um, but it's just this mindset of like, hey, if I want to do something, I can do it. And the power of association, the power of having people around you that can speak life into you and say, hey, if you yeah. want to do it, go after it. Like don't let someone else's word mm-hmm. or their limitation of their own thinking, stop you from doing something. And that's really just been my journey of like, Hey, I got faith that I can, I can do it. And if I can't, I'm going to find out. It's like, Hey, I'm going to step out on the water. If I sink, it's all right. At least I tried, you know what I mean? Sure. And so that's just been my journey of a really business, a family, uh, a ministry. It's like, Hey, I'm going to, I got number one, I got belief in God, but number two, I got belief in myself that he can work in me and through me. And so I'm going to step out and try to do something. And like I said, if I, if I fail, Oh, well, at least I tried. Right. And there's no regrets in that. And uh, it's just been this this journey, man, of uh, of leveling up. And well, you can kind of feel it, see it, too. You know, I mean, like we know each other good enough because we're in proximity, which is why I've always respected you more than anything, man. Because, you know, you lead a, a big church you, as fast as growing one in like Southern California. It's blowing up. And, um, and uh, you know, it's like that sounds good. But the great thing is what that does for the yeah, people. Absolutely. You know, no different when I when you know the business was exploding. We had the, the largest organization in the nation. People were like that's so great. The numbers. It's like no, it's not the numbers. It's the amount of people. Absolutely. It's the impact the you can have that are making such it, it, the financial situation changes the testimonials. Like yep. that's what it's about. Absolutely. But um, you know, it's like when somebody is growing, when you see somebody crossing that gap. Right, where they're developing, where they're progressing, they just they just hold themselves differently. Yeah, they just feel differently, man. And um, you know, over my period of time, like like life, like it doesn't matter what level you get to, that never stops. Right. There's always another level before you. Right. And I and you know, like I I can tell with you, and you can probably tell with me those different areas of our life where we've found times of complacency, and and where you just like are kind of pausing and taking the the gas off and not looking for ways to move forward. And it's just like it's not fulfilling. Yeah. You know, it's almost where, where the, the, the doubt and discouragement and depression, anxiety kind of come in. Cause it's like, you know, that this isn't the finish line. We're not finished until God calls us finished. Right? right. And, um, but when you see somebody progressing and then that person, because they're progressing man, they got something to say now. Yeah. And so now they've learned, right. They've probably earned some income or they've earned in different ways, whether that's their marriage looks better, their, their family looks better, their fitness looks better, right. Their business looks better, but now they can return it. And and I just think, man, for me, like, I think more people are like, I wonder if, the, if you guys are too, where when you're progressing and you're giving, like I was called developing and donating, that's where you feel the best. Yeah. Like I've developed and now I've got something to give. Dude, I remember, um, this is, you were, you were talking about this in the message last Sunday about getting lost and finding your way home, yeah. right, with the GPS. And uh, I had just started, I was 19, and I was running appointments. And I had MapQuest printed off. Yep. And I was like, man, I'm ready to go. I had like 22 appointments 
in two days. It was the most appointments I'd ever booked. I was, dude, fired up. I was like, I'm about to be rich. Right. You know, I'm go, I'm driving and and I get I get lost. I make the wrong turn. And I'm not far from the house, you know, and I'm stacked. Like I can't what be. What neighborhood late. you in? It wasn't it wasn't Compton <laughs> or wherever you were at. I that's where that's where you and Andrew were. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, in yeah. uh I think I was in You're si- safe. Yeah, I was safe. I was Bakersfield or something. <laughs> I was thinking it was Bakersfield. And um and dude, anyways, I I pull up, I go to this gas station and uh this guy just looks like down, man. Like he's just kind of shoulders down, the guy that that's behind the register. Right. And uh I'm like, man, I need some help, dude. Like I'm lost. And I said, I got I got an appointment that the street is this, like, do you know how to get there? And dude, instantly. This guy was fired up. Like he just changed because yeah. he 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 had some value to give me. Like he had something to offer. Right. And he's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You make a left here, make a right, or whatever, you know. And it just made me realize that, man, like, like when we're developing and getting better and leveling up, and then we can help others Absolutely. cross that gap because we've lived it, not because we've read a book on it, not because we heard a message on no. I mean, I've lived it. I've 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 been in the dumps and had such a a a, a wrong perspective on even how big the gap was. Right. Where I thought like it was so much further because I felt so discouraged because I'm trying to cross the gap, but I see no evidence to support the fact that I'm going to get across yeah. it. I'm like, give me some progression, and um and I just like, dude, I think that for me. That's the win. It's like, let's cross some gaps. And then, man, let's help others cross some gaps together. And so the one thing I would encourage you guys to do is like, man, as we go through some stuff, and today we're going to unpack some very practical things, like things that you can leave. And I'd be like, oh, that made me feel good. But no, we're going to give you some stuff where you're like, oh, okay, this is what I could do to help connect and level up to family. This is what I could do to level up my business, my faith. So we're going to give you some practical things. My encouragement is if you feel like that's giving you value, share this with Absolutely. somebody else. And um, I know for me, man, in the early days, like I made an impact by sharing stuff. Yeah. As I was, I, w- I would be like, man, you got to read this book. And then the crazy thing is, man, people will see the value in you because of the value you connected them Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And, um, and I just, you know, so I would just encourage you guys to share it and uh, let people know if it brings you some value. Um, I like what you said. I think there's so much power in movement. Like a lot of people will, will hear some good information or hear a good thought or hear a good teaching, but then they don't move on what they just learned or what they just listened to. And it creates like even a, a block inside their mind where now I know something, but I'm not doing something. And so you actually feel worse about yourself because now you know and you're not doing. Mm-hmm. And I think people underestimate just the power of taking little steps towards progressing in any area of their life that, man, if I could just start one small habit today, that yeah. compounded over time will make such a big difference. And Absolutely. that's been the story of, of, of us. Like we didn't make some just major leap and all of a sudden hit it big in one area of our life. It's just been daily small disciplines done for a long period of time. And now we could look back and go, hey, look how far we've come. Look how our marriages used to be. Because right. you said you're 19 things were a mess. I didn't have divorce papers, but I'm sure, you know, Mariah was thinking about it. That first <laughs> you year, didn't know they were Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, the the first year of marriage dog, because, you know, we had a kid young, got married right away. I'm a little bit older. And so trying to navigate all that, it's like, man, we started putting, you know, getting people in our life that can speak into us and bring health to situations or, or just the financial situations. Every, just my point is start moving on the information that you're, you're listening to and that you're attaining and don't overthink it. Like I think too many people overthink yeah. or they try to say, well, what if it doesn't work or what happens if I look dumb, forget all that. Just start making small daily uh, um, progression towards to get better. And that's going to lead you to a level up life. And then one day you're going to look back and be like, wow, now I can pour into other people and I can share the wisdom and my stories and things yeah. I've gone through and help them get to where I'm at as we're all on this progressive journey to where God wants us. That's Absolutely. What, so I love that. You know, in, in a little plug on a future podcast to come yeah. is we, we are going to unpack habits. You know, Absolutely. like how to how to get just one percent better every day. And as you look back, it's like the compound effect financially. You know, where I talk to clients about, man, you just put a little bit in, right? But if you start early, like if if you're two years old and you put in sixty bucks a month, you might put in thirty grand over the next, you know, forty years. But you're gonna have millions. But if you start at like our age now. Yeah. You know, 40, did you have to put in 500 yeah. grand to, I mean, it's such a substantial difference because the compound effect is not working, but that's, a, that's a thing in every area of your life. It ain't finances only, man. It's, it's that one note, 
to your wife yep. every every you know week. The notes that you stick in the kids, you know, lunch pails and send them off to school that highlights who they are. So that way when they're sitting there, you don't know what their day is. You know, maybe little Timmy comes up and yeah. says like, your shoes are ugly or something, right? I don't know. We can't control it. But what we can control is that, that those words of life that remind our kids of like what God thinks about them and what you think about them. Yeah. And you could just say, hey, I just want to remind you that I love you so much. Um, every time you, you, you handle yourself with confidence and positivity, it honors God. And I just want to remind you that you are a positive leader and to have an amazing day. Love you from dad. That, that stuff you do every Absolutely. week. And all of a sudden, man, like you start to see the connection, your kids start to change and, and, uh, and sort of develop just like working out, man. It takes, it takes some work. You know, I remember when I was, uh, I was 23, I had this Dude, this photo popped up on my iPad, and I don't know why, like, it, it, it just will pop up randomly. It's got, like, an algorithm where yeah. it'll even create a movie. So this movie was when I was, like, 23, and it was, like, my fat season. Yeah. The whole movie. And, uh, and, and my— uh, The cheetah pub dust that you always yeah, refer dude, to. My, yeah, dude, my, my daughter—so Parker's like, Dad, you look like a—she she said, you look like a mid, middle-aged, overweight woman. I was like, a woman? She said, you look like a girl. And, well, the uh, hairstyles were different back then. Well, you know? I didn't, I didn't have any facial yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hadn't came fully into your life yet to kind of help you with yeah, your swag. Yeah, you didn't guide me with yeah, anything, yeah. man. So I didn't. I had, <laughs> I had the, uh, the financial service swag, right. And uh, and eating whatever I was eating. But dude, I was like, that's funny. But he's real. But hey, the next picture, I wasn't like, oh shoot, I'm looking shredded. I got a good beard. No, right. that was a couple years later, right? <laughs> like there was there was some work to be had and yep. some things to go through. Hey guys, real quick, we got bonus content at the end of this episode. We wanted to level you up in a whole new way. And so we got additional things that you're gonna wanna catch. Go to bonus.aleveleduplife.io. We're gonna dive in a deep dive into self-awareness because if you don't know where you're at, you don't know where to go. And so we got a worksheet for you guys to go through. And that way you can really identify like, where am I with my family, my faith, my fitness, my franchise and my finances. And so make sure to check that out at the end of this episode. But um, let's talk about some of the different concepts that we're going to highlight real quick. Like we, we've got kind of five that we want to center in on five that I believe that if you know more people would say, yeah, those are five that are important to me as well. I think, I think, I think most would, but uh, let's unpack some of those. So like faith, like why is that important? And what does that, you know, what does that look like? Yeah. So I believe that, you know, we all have a purpose here on this earth. Like we all, we all want to at least build our faith, our finance, our fitness, our franchise, and our family. Those are like kind of the key areas that we yeah. all have in common that we want to level up and we want to get better at. But for me, you know, I think it all starts with your faith faith in God. So what does that look like to have faith in God? Uh, maybe for you, you don't, you don't believe in God at all. Or maybe you're like, Hey, I'm on the fence where I have questions about it. Or maybe, you know, you, you come to my church or, or part of a local church and you're trying to grow in your faith. What does that look like? How do I grow in my relationship with God? How do I put some biblical principles in my life to help me, you know, love my neighbor as I love myself? How do, how do I figure all that out? I think what this podcast is going to do is, is like you said, give you some practical handles on how to get better, how to grow your relationship with God, how to grow your relationship with, you know, um, your, your, your wife or your kids. Or, but all that to me is rooted in faith. Yeah, sure, if yeah. you know who you are in, in Christ, then it's so much easier to then go out and accomplish things that I believe he's called you to do. Um, and, and we live in a world now where, you know, every, everyone and everything else wants to tell us who we are. And it's so easy to believe the lies, I believe, of the enemy that says, hey, you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, or you're not smart enough or good looking enough or whatever it is. And, and if we hear a lie long enough, we'll begin to believe it unless we have faith rooted in uh, who God says we are. And so part of this podcast, what we want to do is just help bridge the gap between maybe your unbelief and your belief or your um, your non-commitment to really living out biblical principles and just try to help you get a little bit better um, because the truth is we're all we're all sinners mm -hmm. in need of a savior none of us are perfect none of us no um, we, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God is what we believe and so but we do uh, want to help you if if that's you say if you'd raise your hand and say hey I want to. I want to grow in my faith. I want to learn more about God. I want to. I want to become more Christ-like. I want to. I want to serve and not always be served. I want to help. I want to help my community. I want to give back. Well, I think those all start in just having an understanding of who you are 
in Christ and then building everything else on that foundation. So if the business does fail or the family is going through a hard time, man, we're, we're so solid and, and grounded in our faith that nothing could shake us. Mm-hmm. That when the storm comes and when the wind comes and, and tries to tear down what we've built up, it don't matter because our, our foundation is built on the rock of Jesus Christ. And so I think that everything in life, at least for me, and I know for you, is, is built on faith. Right. And it's how we it's how we started this podcast. Like, hey, I don't know everyone who's going to listen, but by faith, we're going to impact some people, you know. Um, and so I think mm-hmm. very, very practically and we'll dive into this, obviously, in different episodes. Um, but just start somewhere so when it comes to faith. If you don't pray, I, I told a story at church one time. I was like my parents when I was younger, we didn't really talk about faith a whole lot. I believed in God. I always said I believed in God. But I remember they would tuck me into bed. It would turn off my light and they would say, all right, make sure you say your prayers. But I didn't know what saying prayers looked like. And so I would just close my eyes and I would say, dear God, I'm saying my prayers. Amen. And yeah. I just started there. And I think that's where a lot of people are at. Like, hey, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to read the Bible. I don't know how to understand this. I don't know. I don't get any of that stuff. Um, just start. Just, yeah. say, and just say, God, I want to start to believe in you. Give me, I want to build my faith in you. And so really the faith aspects of what we want to talk about, that's the foundation of it all for me. I know for you, yeah. it's probably similar to the same maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think, dude, like, there's there's a lot of like success principles and those come from the word every one of them yeah. you know like I, I was going down this this path and and progressing hit new levels and and you know the my careers and the business and and financially and 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 they work like the concepts work the principles work but when you start seeing that the concepts are in the word and understanding how those tie together yeah man that's where it just it, it's like Dude, I don't know. It's like miracle grow on a seed, man. Like you got the seed in right. you. Like, do you want some miracle grow? You know what I mean? I remember one time we were doing something. I think you were leading a meeting or something. And a lot of people were asking, hey, what books do you read? Because you were like the person development guy. Yeah. Like you had all, you had, you're like, I'll read a book a day. All right there, yeah, brother. you got a bunch of books right here. <laughs> yeah. And I remember the shift in your faith when you're like, to be honest, guys, I've read them all. I've seen it all. I've, I've done all the programs. I've read all the books. But now I just kind of read the Bible because what I've realized is they all come back to these biblical foundational principles that are right here. And so we're not going to find anything new. Obviously, people say it in different ways, but it really all comes down to like, hey, God's already laid the foundation yeah. for how to how to do this his way. And, so. and I think it's going to be a beautiful way for, for like, for me, I knew that as I was going down that journey, dude, like I just, I didn't, I didn't get it. And because I was I was confused yeah. and uncertain, I did nothing. Right. And and it wasn't until I got around a group of people, right? And I started attending different seminars, different discipleship courses and classes that I started to say, oh, look, look at how those cor- correlate, right? And how it makes sense. And you know, it's kind of like when we say faith, you know, that could even be like I, you know, seeing your your family and and even right now you're like, man, it's just I'm struggling here. I got an estranged kid and Man, it's tough. He's just or she's just. We all just got not, a strange kid. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but you know you know like at different levels where it's like, dude, the only thing you really want is that fixed. Yeah. It's interesting how like you know you could think things are going great until one area of your life gives you perspective on the other. Yep. You know, it's kind of like if I said you get twenty million dollars tomorrow, most people are like, dude, that would change everything. Like I, I don't think I'd have any more problems. But if I was like, you can't wake up tomorrow. Changes everything. Changes everything. Yeah. Because it makes you realize that man, health is is everything. That's right. You know, it's kind of like if you got all those things and you're just laying in a in a bed and you got the mansion on the hill and everything's going great and you got a sore throat and you can't swallow real good, man, you ain't thinking about nothing about fixing your sore throat. <laughs> right, exactly. Even the sore throat gets you. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and so it's like, I just think that, you know, I know that, dude, you're so good at this. You're so good at like unpacking concepts that people can apply in their life, we can call, you call them success principles, success concepts, but tying the word into it where it throws that miracle girl in the concept. And now you can get it. You can say, oh, that's what it means when it says like, all he'll work all things together for the good to those who love him or are called according to his purpose. Meaning that like that bad situation, oh, there's equivalent good or even better than I could think, ask or imagine that's in it. Now that makes sense. Yeah. Because heck, you, I've read thinking grow rich. And it says that every seed of adversity brings with it an equivalent or better, you know, benefit on the other side of it. The word says it and you're like, oh, God's got his hand. He's the one, you know, so like yeah. it just, it, it, it'll hit and it'll hit different. Absolutely. And, and it'll start you down that journey and crossing that path where you can say, man, this day, today, 
I ain't, I ain't leaps and bounds, but I feel a little bit like I got a little bit more faith. And maybe that's just with a vision of seeing your business at a higher level because maybe you're stuck and you're like I was with those 22 appointments and nobody showed up. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I, I want somebody to show up, enter the door because nobody's in, I, and I'll punch them in the face and then <laughs> and then leave. That's that's where my head was. I was so mad that like nobody was showing up. And um, that, that it gave me such a high discouragement. But I went back and started to consume good stuff, right? Get my mind right. And I went back out. And the next week, I, you know, I ended up making like 24 grand in one week because I didn't let it mess with me. And, and this is intended to help, you know, really tear down the things that could mess with you, right? Yeah. Give you that dose of hope, right? And um, I always tell people, man, I went from being a dope dealer to a hope dealer. That's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's it, good. It, I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mine's actually true. Yeah, well, mine's not true, but <laughs> yeah, yours is definitely yeah, true. That was my first sales yeah, sales yeah. job, and uh, I took a lot from it, man. And it worked out well. <laughs> hey, sales is blessed you. Absolutely. Yeah, it has. So you know, and the, and the thing is this: with fitness, we're gonna have experts come on here, right? Because we don't pretend to be experts in the yeah. fitness category. But but dude, I I, I was. But blessed. you've been on a journey. Yeah, and and it was such a blessing. Um, how God worked everything together. My daughter Parker, you know, uh, back in in March, or I'm sorry, May she got diagnosed with stage four cancer. And, and it was such a, a, a devastating season, a devastating moment when we got it. You know, it was the last day of school. We were leaving and um, we, had, we had Parker, all the other kids. We had Parker's good friend, Claire. And um, me and Tosh went there for field day because it was the last day of school. So it was just a, a, a day of fun. You know what I mean? Like we're there playing with the kids. Me and Tosh were leading different, you know, groups, you know, water balloons. It was just a blast. And, um, and Parker had kept being sick for several months. You know, she'd get strep throat. She, she thought she had COVID. Like it just kept coming. And uh, she's like, mom, I just, I just want this to be a good summer. And we get a phone call and it's the doctor and we're leaving the parking lot. And he says, you got to come in now. And uh, Tosh, I could just see it in her face. You know, like her her physiology just changed. Like she just looked like, um, you know, just tore tore apart for what the news could possibly be. And we didn't know anything. You know, um, she had gotten tested and all these things. They had chest X rays. So we go in and he says, you know, the chest X ray come back. You got to go to Loma Linda now. And I'm like, right now. He's like, right now. And so my mother in law Gina um, came and got the kids from our car, put him in her car at that doctor. We went down to Loma Linda. And um, I remember getting that news where we sat there and he said, your daughter's got stage four cancer. And um, and that was one of the moments where, where as much as I had put in as far as faith, like reading the word and prayer, and it had been a discipline that I thank God I had already created because it's a lot harder to dodge bullets when they're actually coming at you already. It's a lot easier to kind of figure out how to, how to move your head when they're before they happens. And, um, I just felt like so faithless. I was like, man, like my all I could see was like the worst possible outcome. Um, and thinking about even furthering that of like, how am I gonna, how are my kids are gonna deal with if if she doesn't make it, and how am I gonna, how am I gonna get my wife through that? Like, there's no way I can get my wife through that. And um, and 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 this is where it's like so important to get good people around you. Um, Gina and Hillary, I was doing Faith Fridays, you know, at that time, so. I was doing all the national training for the for the company, the the sales podcast, and but I I, I always knew like man I want to I, I got to let people know who I really am and I'm a man of faith, so every Friday I would do a Faith Friday, and um, and Gina said you should probably do that Faith Friday. I got the news Thursday night. I didn't sleep at all Thursday night, and I, and if you know me, I could sleep. I could fall asleep right now. I mean, I have no issues ever falling asleep. I got I got some weird peace where I just fall asleep. I'd be going through any storm. I'll sleep in a storm. The trait of Jesus. Um, yeah, and I just, uh, I stayed up the whole night, and we just, we we worship, we prayed over Parker, and um, the next morning, I mean, I hadn't slept, and you guys came down to the hospital that day, and Hillary even called me. She said, hey, I just, I don't know why. And she's never, she would never, like, make a suggestion like this, right? Hillary's been um, right-hand assistant of mine for a long time, building business together. And she said, I just really feel like I need to tell you, you should do that Faith Friday. And um, I didn't think I had any faith on that Friday to give, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I did it. And, and it's like, man, I just realized that, that God, it reminded me as I did it. See, like, I think it's one thing to hear it, but you don't really experience what that's got that gifts has for you until you you do it and and it and I did that and then um 
you know, I just was like, I'm, we're, we're going to stand in faith. We're going to declare faith. We're going to, I'm not going to let the enemy, this isn't going to end in, in, in death. It's going to end for his glory. And, um, we just started down that path and, and then doors started to open. We got connected with coach Cal to yeah. training lab and, um, what an unbelievable family. Yeah. I mean, they've got like 400 kids. I mean, they got like 13, I think, a lot of kids. And, uh, man, he's a guy that's got it leveled up. And it's like all these areas, you know. And I'm sure he's had his issues. But, dude, like we went in and met with Coach Cal. And he's like, dude, we'll, we'll get Parker in the hyperbaric chamber, the red light therapy, the, uh, molecular hydrogen, gave us chlorophyll, all these different regimens to go through. And um, it made me realize that, man, there, there's a lot of, of people that are going through stuff whether that's physical illness and sickness um heck it could even be like i like mean you man where we yeah. just feel like sluggish like man i like to have a little bit more energy right, right? where it doesn't stop and um and he he gave us regimens and so we're gonna have experts like that at that level come and speak to fitness and um you know to give you guys because i don't want to keep you on the the edge of the your seat with the story you know um we had six months of chemo that we had to go through and um, there was three different PET scans. There was one that was going to be after the first, like kind of third, and then the second, third, and the last, the last one. And after the first PET scan, you know, this was in how God works. Like the last day of school, we got the news. The first day of school back, and and it was interesting because that night, you know, anytime another doctor's appointment was coming up, Parker would so was she was so anxious. Like she she dealt with so much fear and anxiety through a lot of that first like six, seven weeks, um, which that was one of the hardest things for me to see is my daughter just like full of anxiety, like even like little things where she'd pinch her hand, like she just was anxious. Yeah. And um, and, the, and she, the things that got taken from her were also hard. So anytime it was a doctor's appointment coming up, coming up or a reminder of what she had lost because of the cancer was a big emotional event. And that night, before she went to bed, she, she, she opened up the Bible and I, and I didn't tell her to, and she was asking me about a scripture. She did her gratitude journal without me saying, Hey, have you done it? She was doing it. The next morning she, she put a note in, in her sister's lunch pail. You know, I mean, it was just like, she, she didn't ask me about the appointment before she'd be like, mom, what is it, what's going to happen? What's gonna, I mean, like it was so much angst and uh, that, that PET scan review on the first day back to school, it came back cancer free no cancer. And, uh, the doctor was like, I'm, we never see this because it's stage four, a real miracle, a real miracle. And, um, she, the doctor, we even went to Beverly Hills, got her a wig. Yeah. Cause they said after four weeks, you're going to she'll lose all her hair. And that was her big concern. Like, daddy, I just don't want to lose my hair, you know, cause she's a 11 year old girl. And so we went down and got the, got the, the best wig place. And, and, um, Seven weeks go by. My wife's like, is this he, the chemo working? Like, why has she not lost her hair? You know, I called the doctor. She's like, no, she's definitely going to lose it. She's, it, sometimes it, it'll take seven, eight weeks. But man, 20, 30 weeks later, she didn't lose one it's single. Gross. It's thicker. <laughs> yeah. Lose no hair. The doctor's like, I don't know how to explain that, you know. And uh, God had his hand on it. And we also had a lot of therapies that God brought to us. Because yeah. God will use people and, and, and bring things to you for him to work his miracle That's through right. as well. And, and so... You know, we're going to talk a lot about not just like, hey, how to get shredded, but like how to get healthy. Yeah. How do you That's physically get healthy? Absolutely. I, I love that, man. I think, um, you know, I, I've been alongside this journey. You, you share the, I'm sure one of these episodes will dive more deeper into that. And because I think what I've witnessed, you know, walking on alongside of you uh, with Parker's journey and her story, it's been a real inspiration to me personally, but not only to me, to everyone who's had you know, their eyes on your family and, and Parker's story. Cause we, one thing I take away from that is like, you didn't do it alone. Like you didn't shrink back in the moment when things got hard, but you had already built up enough faith and, and had there enough people around you to go, Hey, you need to do the faith Friday. Hey, you need to let, you need to bring people in on this journey. Hey, you had all these people, um, who you had associated with who can say, Hey, you know, this is not the end. This is not how the story right. ends like there's more to this this is going to work together there is going to be healing and we, we've brought in people or you you've brought in people in on this journey uh alongside with you and through that man you've not only 
I don't know if you even recognize this or not, but your faith has grown so much stronger because of the situation. Your family has become closer because of the situation. Like your financial situation is is growing. Like the fit, like you're a fitness freak now. <laughs> you know, like you go on these praise runs and do all these different things because of this one bad situation. But it could have just have easily gone the other way. It affected every it other. It affected every single area, area of your life. And, and so my point going back to earlier is like, man, it was all rooted in your faith. And, and number one, who God is, but then who you are in him and all these promises that he has for you and everything every other area of your life has been built up and blessed because of uh, uh your faith yeah, it's you the know? center of it all absolutely and so like like you said our goal and our heart is to help you along your journey maybe your situation is not as traumatic as that or, or, or you can't even relate to that at all but there's some area of your life that you're walking through that's a struggle that's a difficulty that's a maybe it's finances maybe it's a relationship our goal is to help you share our story and our testimony, how we got through some hard things and difficult situations and help you just take one step closer to closing that gap from where you are to where you could be. And so I love that, Absolutely. man. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Well, and I know it's emotional too. It's like, man, I got I've four got, kids. I've gotten, got, I've gotten better with you. You're man. always trying to one up me with everything. I but, got four yeah. kids. You got five. That's why we adopted, you know, <laughs> but I am three inches taller than you. <laughs> so I don't true. know if you're going to catch me there. Well, I'm going to start wearing those hookahs. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so true. Those, those will give you a couple inches. By the way, they're great for running too. That's a fitness tip. Yeah. Get some hookahs, you know? Um, so faith, family, we want to help people grow in their relationship with, in their marriages, uh, finances. I mean, we both have businesses outside of, you know, obviously I'm a pastor and a lead of church, but I, I've started a business much uh, yeah, per, couple of business even before purpose that. and visions for, for all those things, you yeah. know, like, um, you know, when you start unpacking these other areas, man, everything leads to each other, you know, yeah. like, you know, like we found a purpose in like adopting, you know, our, my, my son Solomon and, and like, if we, we weren't rooted in all these areas and, you know, we, I, I wouldn't have probably seen the vision of like, man, I'm called to adopt. Yeah. And, um, that little dude has blessed us in such a big way, man. I mean, he is the man. Yeah. You know, he, I mean, he, we go out places, people think he's my son. Or, that's you know? true. That's true. <laughs> they, they, def, they definitely do. Um, unless it's summertime, man. You that's watch, true. Hey, that's you, true. You watch July's podcast, man. I get dark, bro. I don't know what it is. My daughter's, you know, she, in my, my 16 year old, she's like, you know, she wants to be tan. Yeah. Like she's 16 and she's going in the, you know, the look and she's like, dad, how the heck? Like, what's your ethnicity? And I was like, I don't know. You gotta figure I said, it out. I'm not your dad, though, sweetie. That's why you're not. And she's like, you're not. And I'm just messing with you, you know? But uh, she's always That's like, good. I don't get how you're so dark. But um, And my kids, you know, yeah. look more like, like me. your skin tone. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's the story we don't want to unpack. Yeah, you know? yeah. But uh, so, you know, when you look at like, um, you know, these different areas, what we want to do is wrap up guys with like some, some rapid fire tips, Yeah. you know, give you some tips, some practical handles where you can leave and say, all right, got it this week, you know, maybe it's not in every area, but maybe you pick one where you're like, man, I just, I want to apply this. And so we're going to go through each of these levels real quick, Brand, I want you know, start with faith. Absolutely. Like what's a practical tip somebody could do today to level up their faith? Very, very practical. Number one, download the Bible app. Download the Version Bible app on your phone. Very, very simple. There's all kinds of different plans that they have in there. Pick a, a, a devotional, something that relates to you. Um, it will give you scriptures. It will give you questions. It will give you um, things to journal about. Start there. Don't overthink it. Just go in there and pick one that relates to you. I know you said one earlier that you like. What was it called? A uh, blue letter Bible. Blue letter Bible. And then what's the other one? Oh, you're talking about the um, the devotion of the yeah, five day. It's a uh, grit. Don't quit. Grit. Don't yeah, quit. Go on you version. Go to plans. Grit. Don't quit. Start there. And then also start praying. Just ask God to begin to build your faith and, and ask him to be with you everywhere you go. Start there. So just, hey, God. Um, I'm coming to you in faith today that you're going to be with me in this business meeting. Hey, God, I'm coming to you today. Uh, when I get home, just be with me. When I walk through these doors, give me peace. Give me strength. Whatever it is, you know you. Start to build that relationship with God right there, and it will progress from there. So just very, very practical. Start to pray and start to download your Bible. I love that. And if there's someone in your life who's a little bit, you know, ahead of you in their faith journey, reach out to them. Say, hey, this is where I'm at. Trust me, there is nothing better than getting a phone call and saying, hey, Absolutely. I'm trying to build my faith. Where do I start? As a pastor, as just like a, a Christian man, I'm like, man, that blesses me. That's what it's yeah. all about, that someone could look at me and go, hey, how do I get closer to God? I That's agree, what we're dude. here for. Funny how you say that, because I've had a couple phone calls um, as we've gone through this with Parker, and I've been a lot more vocal about my faith and how that that's what got me through it and got our family through it. And um, I've had a couple calls where people were like, hey, kind of help me understand, like, like I don't get it. Like, I want to have a better relationship with God, but I don't know how to take that step. I don't know how to bridge that gap to the next level. And um, in those conversations, man, I, I, I've coached people for 16 years in selling and building businesses and, and just mindset and mental toughness and 
and nothing hits like that. And so you absolutely reach out and, uh, and ask, um, family tip. I would, I would say the, the tip that w- our family has put in place, that I think has made the biggest difference, especially as we navigated that storm as everything was going on with Parker was a gratitude journal. Right. And, and just be beca- having a strategy of gratitude. So gratitude is not just a feeling, it's a strategy, right? You can't be anxious and depressed and fearful at the same time as you're holding the, the thought and emotion of gratitude. And so, you know, the simple practical tip is, is just write down three things a day that you're grateful for and actually envision, like visualize those things, like feel those things that you're grateful for. Um, I like to even go through my phone and put some photos in like a photo album in your phone that, that just like, when you look at them, you're like, God, that's just like, that feels good. You know, it could be like a trip that you took with your family to Hawaii or wherever, you know, it could be just a picture of, of your kids snuggled up with you. It could be an accomplishment. Maybe you're you, you, a meeting that you went to and you had a big impact and it's a picture of you, spe- whatever it is, but like look at that photo and then just go back to that feeling and see when, when you are feeling grateful, man, I just feel like you're, more likely to go out there and, and generate and bring more things in your life to be grateful. And so this, I think, is a strategy that is essential to help you in all the other areas. This is like a foundational principle is if you can be grateful for your family, if you can be grateful for your business, if you can be grateful for to God, if you be grateful for your fitness, you're more likely to go do the things, to bring the things in your life to give you more things to be grateful for. That's right. And um, I, so I just call it a strategy, a strategy of gratitude. It's got to be a choice. It's got to be intentional. And uh, sometimes it's not easy. But realize, like anything, the times when it's not easy, it's the times when it's the most necessary. That's good. Right? It's kind of like, you know, I don't want to go to, I never wanted to go to the gym after I, I pounded a huge bag of goldfish and hot Doritos. I never wanted to go to it. But guess what? That's when I needed to go to the gym the most. Right. Right. Yeah. And by the way, that's when I left the gym, I felt the best about that's making good. that decision to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. And so gratitude is essential. Three things you're grateful for, fill it. And then also pick maybe a couple things in the future that have not yet happened and thank God as if they're already happened, right? So if you're like, man, maybe your marriage is not where it needs to be. That's a key that we got to unpack. You got some disrespect, you know, maybe like you and your spouse have got some resentment and and stuff and and just start looking at like, man, I'm I'm thankful that, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a man that treats my wife as God would treat her like I'm going to treat her and love her as Christ of the church like I'm going to that's how I'm going to and you start thinking about that and the reality is you're you don't know the difference between what you experience and what you actually imagine so build some imaginations that give you a future and a hope so three things you're grateful for and then before you go to bed one thing you learned one thing you loved it's what we do with the kids every night what did you learn what did you love so gratitude learn and love great that's that's probably the best family one I got I love it all I'm right. copying all that. <laughs> all right, fitness. You fitness, fitness, yeah. I love what you said earlier. Um, when it comes to fitness, just start where you are. Um, don't compare your your fitness journey to anyone else's or you'll be discouraged. Just end up, you know, instead of walking around the neighborhood, walking in the freezer. Yep. And so just, <laughs> just start where you are. If you could do 50 push-ups a day, do 50 push-ups. If you could do five, do five. If you can't do any, you know, just get up and do something. Um, but just just begin that journey. Accountability when it comes to fitness is so yeah, it is. important. I think, uh, you know, our wives work out together and they're up at like four or five in yeah. the morning sometimes. Um, but it's like that accountability showing up, not want to let that other person down. And so I think just having an accountability partner when it comes to your fitness um, and let there's something about letting other people know that you're on this journey that just makes you more intentional about actually doing it. And so don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. If you got it, maybe let this be the, a sign, go to the gym, get on that Peloton, walk around the block, do some pushups. Maybe you got some weights in the garage, just start somewhere. And then eventually put a plan together, put some structure in place, get some accountability in your life to start getting stronger, better and healthier every single day. So just basic, simple tips, tips, just start. I love it. Just I love it. it. Um, finance, finance tip I tell you guys is, is, is save, pay yourself first, because if you don't pay yourself now, you're never going to pay yourself when you think you can pay yourself. Meaning that most people think like, man, once I start making this amount or making more money, then that's when I'm going to, I'm going to start saving. It never works that way. I mean, I was in finance service for a long time and I'd watch people that made like 50 grand a year and dude, they had a, a big savings. They had rental houses and stuff, you know, and there'd be somebody that a doctor I'd meet with that made 
six, seven hundred grand a year, no savings, but bigger house. So most often what we do, if you don't pay yourself first, is like you'll just go get, you'll go from a Toyota to a Lexus to a Mercedes to a Porsche. Yep. You go from like the the apartment to the condo to the to the house to the big house, right? And so stuff will just start to happen that way. So so pay yourself first. Easy tip is to set up. What I did at 19 is I set up an account that was a separate account. Um, it was, I don't even think it's around. It was like Capital 360. This is going way back. And um, it would come out and go into my, my, my savings account without me thinking about it. It was automated. So every week it would just pull out a certain amount every single week. And what'll happen is it'll start to show you that, man, I do have control over my financial situation. I can, I, I don't have a condition that's going to limit me from getting financially free. No, I've got a discipline that's unequivocally, no doubt, going to get me to the next level. And so that discipline is so essential. It teaches yourself and it shows yourself that you are a saver, that you're going to get out of the rat race. And um, what'll happen is after so many years, you know, you can look up and say, all right, now how can I take this and invest it somewhere? And now you start getting your money to work for you and you're on your way to financial freedom, which is the ultimate level that you want to attain yeah. in your financial situation. That's good. Franchise, what do you got for franchise? The last one for franchise, which is like your business. Number one, have a vision. Where do you want to be? Where are you at, where are you at now? And how do you get there? There's probably someone that's a little bit further along or has done something in the similar vein. Yeah. Man, see where they're at. See if you're compatible with their values, with how they're, how they're building their business. And, and maybe even reach out to them, maybe even DM them. Like we live in this world now where you can yeah. get a hold of anyone. It's like, it's the, what, what's it called? Like the power of like you're connected oh, you're like three, three degrees, or four people away, three from, degrees away from, from anyone. Yeah. I think that's, that's so powerful. <clears throat> Find someone that's a little bit further ahead in your business or where you're trying to be financially in your franchise and reach out to them or just have a vision. Um, Cause without a vision, you're going to perish without, without knowing where you're going to go. It's hard to get there. So have a big vision, write it down, make it clear, make it simple. And number two, uh, make sure you got the right people around you. This is not like a, a game where you want to be building something all by yourself. Because mm -hmm. um, number one, what fun is that if you're only doing it for you? And number two, get some good people around you that you can that will help you and believe in what you're going after. And then not, not only are you going to bless your business, but you're going to bless the people along the journey. That's so get good. some right people around you. Um, have a vision. Make it clear whether it's a one year, six month, five year, whatever it is. Uh, dream big. Just start I love small. That, dude. That's you know? such a big, big yeah. tip. You know, to find somebody that you just feel like when they speak, yeah, it's like nourishment for you. That's been my journey all along and, yeah. and really a lot of different areas. Like, hey, I, I could connect with them. I can relate to them. What mm -hmm. do they do? And I, I, I have a similar vision. Let me go after this. Let me write what, what I feel like God's called me to do with my franchise, with my business, and then put some practical steps to reach and attain those things, you know? Yeah, Don't yeah it's beautiful. And it's so simple, man. Like, I had straight A's in high school. Cause I sat next to smart people, baby. Right. You know what I mean? Like I found right. a smart girl <laughs> and I could pick them out. Like I know you, you're, I could see IQ on your forehead. Like she's smart. And I'd sit there like, Hey, do you mind just like moving your hand? And you know, I'd be nice, charismatic. And like, dude, I'd get, I'd get the grades. And uh, I applied that same thing, man, in every area of my life. Like trying to figure it on your own is so hard and it's so pointless, man. Like iron sharpens iron. That's right. You know, we're supposed to get, there's, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. And so that's such a, a big, big tip is find somebody that, like, there's a bunch of experts, but there's one that you're like, man, I like the way they say it. Yeah. Like, I like the way. And that's why it's so important that there's so many different diversifications with churches and pastors. It's like, not one's better than the other. They're all, they're all you know, proclaiming the gospel. But you might just feel like, man, I, I received that better, right? And, yeah. and that's what you need to be able to have enough energy to cross that gap to your next level. As, as we wrap Faith, up. Family, yep. fitness, franchise, finance, man, it's life. We're trying to help you grow and be healthy in all these different areas. And that's really what our heart is and what we aim to do. And so hopefully you can, Some you know. Good, good nourishment. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's say, I want to say this, guys. I think we want to connect with you. We want, we want this to be interactive. We want to make sure that, that we're speaking specifically to your needs, what you need to take that next step along the gap that you've got, because every gap is different. we got similar gaps. We've all got the gap in these different areas, but we want to be able to best serve you. And so any questions that you've got, please put them down in the comments below. Um, we want to be able to kind of get together beforehand and say, hey, let's address this topic, this topic. This will be the solution for that problem. This will be able to help give some nourishment in that situation. And so make sure you, you put any questions you've got in the comments 
below. Make sure to like, subscribe. We're going to put a lot of content out to best serve you and a lot of practical things. You know, we sat back and and I just thought about like, man, I want I want a hub of where I want to like get something where today, how can I build my relationship with my kid a little better, right? What's a conversation I can have in the in the car when I take my kid to soccer? See, most people, I think that you got to spend so much time in every area. No, the time's got to be purposeful and you got to be present. Amen. And so if you can have some great things to be purposeful and present in every minute throughout the day, oh man, like that's how Life you can level up. That's how you can level up. And so we want to be able to do that stuff and and give you some practical stuff where you can just like take it and, 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 and put it into your day. And now your day is that much better. And so put the questions below. In the comments, we want to be able to connect with you. Um, with that said, hey, man, it's been exciting to be on the first podcast yeah. with you. Thank you for joining, dude. Love you, bro. This Love is going to be a exciting mission as we go out. And um, and I know I'm going to get a lot listening to you, man. And um, and, and, the, and the thing is this. Anytime you share, the person that shares gets the most from it. Yeah, so great. I think I'm going to level up Me too. by just saying some Me too. stuff. And, uh, and so share some of the stuff you get with others as well. Be a blessing to others and um, it'll make a big difference. And so guys, to have a leveled up life, go take the steps to get there. And a leveled up life is always a life worth living. Hey, you are special. You are here on the first episode of a leveled up life podcast. We love you. Can't wait to see you in episode number two. All right. See you guys.